why racehorses are so conditioned and why the problems that people have when they do take on a, a, an X racehorse. Um, and very often people take on X racehorses because they're so cheap and it's all they can afford. Beautiful horse, very cheap, but of course they can't do a thing with it. Um, and it's because these horses have to be taught how to actually look at the world all on their own, um, that they haven't got the herd to help them. Um, they have to learn how to interact with other horses out in the field. Some More and more trainers, to be fair now, are starting to turn racehorses out, even if it's just for an hour a day. And maybe they're in paddocks next door to each other. They don't actually get to itch and scratch with another horse, but they are getting a bit of time out. Um, but in the old days, certainly they never, ever, ever saw a field until they're completely burnt out or were lame. Um, and so I just got to understand... Um, how to get racehorses to actually um, start to be able to cope on their own. One of the biggest problems you get with any racehorse that comes out of training, and people say to me all the time, Melanie, I've got this horse, I don't know what to do with it, I can't get her out of the field on her own. If I bring her into the stable, she flies around the stable, she's whinnying, she's shouting, you can't tie her up. If you tie her up, she's pulling on the rope, she rears, she does this. The only time she looks happy is when she's out in the field with all the other horses. And it's because they've just never hacked out on their own. No racehorse trainer says, oh, well, you just can't take that horse up the road on your own and you go, everything's together. So when you are dealing with ex-race horses, it's understanding how very conditioned they have become in the way that their life has been, um, bearing in mind that they are um, sold as yearlings, well it's sort of 18 months really, but they'll go, if they're going to be two year olds, they're going to go from 18 months old, they're going to go to the trainers, they're going to get broken in, in a very, very basic way, they're going to be run as two year olds, run as three year olds, run as four year olds, kicked out somewhere along the line, and then just like kicked out into the big wide world, and some unsuspecting person buys them. Um, so they've never had a childhood. They haven't had the pleasure of leaping around in fields playing with other two and three year olds. It's never happened. Um, once that weaning stage is over and they're brought in for, for production uh, as yearlings at 18 months old, that's their play, that's virtually their playtime finished. Um, that's when they're stable for great lengths of time and they're put on horse walkers and they have to lunge and they have to go in hand in a bridle, they have to be walked from and, and they've become nearly too valuable, because they're going to be sold at the sales, they're too valuable to go and chuck them all out in the field together again, because they're all going to get banged and bumped and bitten. And, of course, colts are colts. Um, they're not cut. So, of course, you've got 18-month-old, highly corned-up fed colts, which are very boisterous with all that testosterone flying around. Um, so they've just never had a proper childhood. And so therefore, the most basic things that we just... You'll presume on with most... You could just presume that most horses will just go in a field with others and not either get killed or be killed. That will come in when you want them to come in. They'll be happy tied up on the yard, bang your saddle on, go out for your ride on your own. All the things which are such simple, wishless <coughs> things. But with race horses can be absolutely impossible. Um, so separation anxiety and then repetitive behavior, cooped up behavior, weaving, wind sucking. Uh, they are very, very often got um, um, stomach ulcers, understanding the impact of stomach ulcers on them, um, understanding the, the correlation between the food that they've always had and the way their exercise has always been, while they've been in training, the damage that it does. Um, and the damage, the internal damage that you um, inherit when you get yourself an X-race horse. Not always, but sometimes. Um, you know, the invisible damage, you can see if they've done a tendon, you can see if they've got a bit of arthritic changes going on in a fetlock, you can see, you can see those ones, but you can't see stomach ulcers. Um, so there's a lot to retraining race horses. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's, um, I love the correlation you keep making between um, development in or developing uh, young horses and children because I, I've worked with some children and, and some horses both that have been in abusive situations and and really when you break it down like the racehorse world is is not a pleasant place and 
So I think that it's really cool that you put put those two together because it is very similar in in like the learning defects that they experience and the trauma and everything else. I think that it's um it's it's pretty distressing. It's noble work that you do rehabilitating these these horses. It's great. <laughs>